All right, hey, let's talk about narcissism. How to break narcissism. There's like a lot of ways that people try to describe what a narcissistic person is like, and uh, they kind of all miss the actual real point that does stay consistent, that makes, that explains narcissism the best way. And the way it exp uh, narcissism works is you're living under the assumption that what you want is what other people want as well. Because all people, you assume, are, in a way, the same. At the end of the day, everyone wants the same things. And if we go under that assumption, we can figure out that when I have an experience, another person that would have went into that experience will have the same experience, essentially. Once you go from that assumption, you go, okay, well, if this is how they felt, because I've done it and I've felt a certain way, then that means that they are going to feel the same way as me and going to respond a similar way and if they respond different from me that means they either have a different way that they interpret in words what they the same thing that you felt or maybe they're going to explain it in a different way but they're explaining what you're feeling because what they're feeling is the same as what you're feeling so they're going to explain what you're feeling you might as well just simplify it and do it that way and that's what narcissists do. They simplify it and they cut, skip the steps to try to get to the most straightforward step, which is if I experience the same thing as somebody else, we feel the same things as well. And therefore we had the same experiences. But the problem is there are parts of the world that we don't get to see as a narcissist. And as anybody, we don't get to see the entire world. And that means that there are things that a other people might experience before we experience the same thing or are in the same room and whatever. And therefore, there are things that will affect that experience. And also, not only do we experience things and then assume other people to experience the same thing, we also expect other people to react and feel the same way about those experiences. Therefore, if we keep building on that, then if we feel and want the same things, then everyone wants the same thing. So if you're in a situation where you're like, oh, I really want to talk to this person, a narcissist will walk up and want to talk to that person and come up to them with the assumption that that other person also wants to talk to them and mirror everything off of the world around them, assuming that if you're in the same situation as them, you will both want to talk to each other. If you're both in the same situation, you don't want to talk to them, you're going to assume that that person doesn't want to talk to you either. And the problem with that, of course, is that that's not always the case. It's not always going to be the same feelings. And most of the time, if it's going to be one in every chance possible, that it's going to be the same reaction from them as from you. And every other possibility is that it's going to be a different reaction than you and a different reaction isn't going to be because they are not being genuine with their reaction it's because their genuine reaction is going to be different from yours and that genuine reaction being different is not manipulation techniques is not acting is not avoiding or whatever because then we start to think oh well this is the truth and we assume that that's the truth that this is how it's supposed to be and therefore, anything different from that is an act of purposeful change from the genuine default. And that is really how narcissists think. How do I know? Because I am one. Naturally, I am a narcissist, and it is not an easy battle. Uh, it's not a hard one necessarily, but it's also not easy, because it's very easy to lose your way, uh, and it's very easy to not notice your own narcissistic side a lot of narcissists don't know that they're narcissists but this i hope will reveal some things this is how narcissists think and honestly the only way to really know that, that doesn't work and doesn't make sense is to explain it in the most simple of terms which is how narcissists really view the world is in this simple very clear-cut ways there you go how to break narcissism is to realize that the version on which you're basing all your assumptions and basing all of your predicaments of the world around you is a one in a infinite of ways, or one in many, 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 many ways. And the only way that nor that the view that you're that you tend to push yourself 
of the world works is if you go with the assumption that all people are the same. And the problem is all people are not the same. All people are not going to have the same rules that they follow and understand as you in life. So that is something that is quite revealing and quite different about life can really take a narcissist and notch down to a more neutral, calming state, a more balanced state of view in the world. So the whole point of that was to say that basically if you walk up to somebody and you're like, yeah, I want to talk to them, maybe they don't want to talk to you. And that's not because they're acting as if they don't want to talk to you, even though they do. Because if it's like, it's not because, oh, I want to talk to them. That means that they're in the same world and same space as me. They definitely want to talk to me too, uh, by default. And now the default now is being affected by this person that decided that they didn't like something about me or they like, wanted to hurt me. And they've decided that they're going to act as if they don't want to talk to me. And they're going to say, no, nah, I don't care. Go away. I don't want to talk to you. And they're going to say that to me because... And they're saying that because they want me to either feel hurt or they want to manipulate me or they want to create a position of power between the two of us. And uh, they actually do want to talk to me, but they have, they're doing all of this against the nature of what is going on. Now, this is what a narcissist thinks. This is literally how it works in our head. But it's, of course, not the truth. The truth is that the natural, genuine thing for the other person might be that they don't want to talk to you because maybe they're waiting on a call from someone else, they're thinking about something in their head, they're maybe uh, daydreaming and they want to be kind of chilling, relaxing, getting away from talking to other people. All of these options exist and we've been in those situations. So the trick is that narcissists, we've been in situations where we don't want to talk to someone. Maybe sometimes we're in our own little world in our head and we're maybe writing a song in our head, a poem or something. Maybe we're listening to some video in our earphones and we want to hear the video because it's something exciting that we're looking forward to hearing about, things like that. So in all those scenarios, it can't be obvious. And now you put yourself with that scenario against the scenario that you were just in where you walked up to someone you wanted to talk to. Now, those two people can't have the same genuine baseline. Therefore, disproving that baselines should be the same when you think about it completely removes that reality and really opens up your mind to the fact that this is all real, really just bullshit and doesn't really work. The only way it works is in leadership and group mentality and like leading groups that have one goal in mind. Overhauling kind of leadership is where this becomes helpful, but in personal case by case things like relationships, friendships, hangouts with people and things like that. That's where it really matters. The second big downfall of narcissism. We really want people to agree with us because of this whole thing about, oh, we want to feel like we're all in the same, you know, and we all feel the same and we all respond the same because that simplifies the life. It makes life easy and uh, simple and cutthroat and cookie cutter basic. And the problem with that is the second thing that happens is that we start to really, really push perfection on when it comes to our interpretation of the world. Because it's like, well, we have to perfectly interpret the world so that there's no chance that somebody doesn't agree with us, doesn't like our approach, doesn't have a feeling of, yeah, I agree with what you're saying. Exactly. You know, well, unless there's that answer, you, we feel like we've failed as a person and we fail to do justice to our interpretation of the world around us because that means that we haven't fit in our standard that we're expecting of everyone to have the same approach and feelings to everything in life. Um, and if we're not fitting into the own mold that we've created with, our, created with our expectations, then we're failing. And that's not good. And the problem with that is then our interpretations, our projects, our everything start to have a perfectionism edge to them. And the problem is that we start to associate with the things that we interpret in a very deep sense, in a very personal sense that this is our interpretation. And if you don't agree with it, you don't like it, then there must be something wrong with you. You're trying to hurt me or something with your disagreeing with me or my interpretation. I have to bend and bend and all this, this stuff and I have to wiggle and, and fit this perfect mold so that I can 
be in a perfect position where my interpretation is right and good and uh, working for everybody else around. And therefore, because we worry so much about this, we have this sense that we can't change since we want everyone's interpretations and things to be simplified in the sense of everyone has it the same. Because of that, we have the sense of, well, things are not going to change. If everyone's going to have the same baseline, then it would ruin the entire philosophy and the entire structure of how we look at the world. If, a, if we had to bring in the factor of change into all of it and be like, well, people can change their opinion. People can change their, their feelings. They can change their desires and their goals and all that stuff. And we fear that because it destroys our understanding and our foundation for things and foundations for how life works, foundations for stability of understanding people around us and why they do things and how they do things. So we need this stability. And so we're like, well, we can't have change be a factor or else this all kind of becomes too difficult. And it becomes that, you know, I could be walking up to somebody and I want one thing and they want another. And if we can't, if we don't want this, the things that can work together, then walking up is a waste of time. Well, Yes, but also no, because if you have that as the truth, then you can also have the truth that people can change. Not only are people going to be different off the get-go, it also means that if people can be get different from the get-go, that means people can also change into being different and the same as well after the get-go. If you can already change things from before the get-go, then you especially can be involved in, in part of change after the get-go. And in the conversation, in the moment, you can affect and change things. And that is the power of change that is completely untapped a lot, oftentimes by us narcissists. Because we're so afraid of the change, we are actually completely ignoring the power that we have in a conversation to create change. Especially knowing what we want and how we come to what we want. And how we being so well analyzed into creating our persona and our understanding of what we want we can therefore convince others to want that as well that is why our leadership is such a powerful side of us but to tap into the bridge to that that is what's really important anyway thanks for watching